and here we go good morning good afternoon good evening welcome to bwtm sports so we're going to be reviewing the fight between natasha jonas and vivian Obanoff. now you be able to hit that subscribe button already please do hit that subscribe button we do appreciate you so let me get into things here first of all i didn't see this fight live last night so i'm not gonna lie and tell you that i sat down and watched this fight last night i didn't i felt i had better things to do than watch next gen i'm not a big fan of next gen to be honest just being honest with you but um no i didn't see the fight last night but i saw it via a comment from one of my um, twitter followers shout out to mikey for that and he was talking about how the chast jonas got knocked out on what so i went and checked and looked at the fight and of course <laughs> What I tuned in to see Natasha Jonas getting knocked from pillar to post and put on the canvas. But let me rewind this a second. So I've tuned in. I've gone and watched this video now of Natasha Jonas. And here we go. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. So we're going to be reviewing the fight between. Okay. Sorry about that. Apologies. So yeah, I'm watching uh natasha jonas and i did the criminal thing which was to leave the volume on to listen to sky sports punditry and within the first 30 seconds of watching this video first 30 seconds natasha jonas she's levels above a uh, world title fight uh she'll beat this girl and um, beat all the people in the division how great natasha jonas is bloody bloody blah, blah, blah so you know, also that, you know, who else fights on Sky? Who's a female fighter? Katie Taylor. You know, the angle is to support that super fight. So you sell the whole thing up with Natasha Jonas. I guess what the plan was, was Natasha Jonas to win this fight and then go on and fight Katie Taylor for a world title. So this belt would have given her position to have a top 10 ranking and fight Katie Taylor. I guess that was the plan. Mm. Well, where did it all go wrong? Well, first start, from the first round, she looked wrong. She looked like she didn't want to be there. She looked like a girl that didn't have a clue how to box. She's moving back in straight lines against a girl who's notorious for swinging, winging hooks, left and right hands. And that was encouragement for her. But we can even go further back. I mean, I've heard this channel and I've heard it across many boxing experts who say that and I used the, the Anthony Yard exact model yet again. Even worse, because Natasha Jonas is a decorated amateur. Anthony Yard isn't. And I'm using this an, only as an example. This is a decorated amateur who was expected big things as a pro. And it's all gone horribly wrong. And that's somebody who's had experience. Somebody who's an experienced amateur was in the GB squad. This has happened. And is it bad management? Is it spending more time uh, involved in other things than boxing? I don't know. Is it the hunger's not there? I don't know. But what I do know is technically Natasha Jonas was found out. That's the first thing. And she also seemed to have no punch resistance uh, when Vivian was landing those big shots. She was not able to move out of the way. The Sky Sports pundit seemed a bit shocked as to see uh vivian landing the shots that she was but i wasn't shocked when you go and look at J natasha jones's box record okay just for a second if you go and look at her record on box rec okay and she first fought a girl that was one and three then she fought a girl that was five with 24 defeats then she fought a girl with 14 14 wins and 26 losses then she fought a girl with one fight and nine losses then she fought a girl with 10 wins and 23 losses then she fought a girl with five fights five wins and six losses and then she fought vivian obanoff who had 12 fights with four losses okay that was probably the best the best girl she fought on a record and then you fight and see what vivian obanoff has fought okay let's go to vivian obanoff she's not had a ko she never knocked anyone out so she wasn't a puncher so i can see why they decided to stick Jonas in the ring with her and you'll see the girls that she's been in with and you'll see that um 
Obanoff has fought better opposition. Let's look at Obanoff's record. Okay. So her debut, she her fights was well, just two debuts here, but she won uh on points. Then she she had a winning record of five fights. Right? And then on a sixth fight, she was she got beaten on a unanimous point decision. Then she fought girls uh, a girl of two and eight record, seven and twelve record, got losses. Then she fought Katie Taylor, one and oh, five and eight. Then she fought Iwina, who had 13 and 0 record. Then she fought a girl was five and one. Then one and oh, she won against. Then Chantel Cameron, she won, it was four and oh. And then she fought Natasha Jonas. So for me, there's no reason why. There was nothing to suggest that Nick, 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 Natasha Jonas should have been anywhere near Vivian Obanoff, personally matchmaking she should have she has she had no business being anywhere in the ring with uh obanoff none whatsoever categorically none and so i say this to say that not only was it poor management because you've got a girl in obanoff who's highly experienced and uh katie taylor didn't stop her um chanted Tam she retired in chantel cameron's fight but she wasn't stopped um and a girl that's been the distance with Katie Taylor, arguably uh, the best fighter in that division. Now, I will, I will say this. The Jessica McGaskill would have knocked both of these girls out on the night. Okay? And Jessica McGaskill hasn't had any GB experience or had a big, long amateur career. I will, I will put that out there. Um, because both girls look very beatable. And I think that uh, uh, based on what uh, Jessica McGaskill did against... Um, Katie Taylor should knock these two girls out easy, Not easy, easy work, easy work. So, where's he gone wrong? Look to the trainer. Um, 34 years old is uh Natasha Jonas. Did she have to take this fight? Well, I wonder, first of all, was she fit? Meaning, was she ready for the fight? I mean, she may have been fit physically, but mentally, emotionally, was she was she ready to fight? What, what was going on behind the scenes? Um, was she rushing to this fight? Was she forced into this fight? Was she told, look, you need to step up now. You're 34 years of age. You need to step up. Was she given time to prepare for this fight? I don't know because I I never personally have had any interest in Natasha Jones. I've never seen what the big fuss is about. And I guess this is one of the reasons why. So now look at this. There are many questions to ask. But backing up in straight lines. Uh, unable to get out of way of big punches. No punch resistance what's, whatsoever to a girl who, who on record can't punch. See, records are deceiving. But uh, Natasha Jonas did not look right from first round. And, uh, you know, and the Sky punditry team were highly disrespectful to her opponent, Vivian uh, Obanoff, who, um, who's, uh, who's done well and won a title. So congratulations to Vivian Obanoff. Ash and Natasha Jonas. You see, I'm going to use Natasha Jonas as, as a perfect example here. You know, people rushing for world title fights. People online talking about, yeah, yeah get him in a world title fight. Yeah, Natasha Jonas is the business. This is what happens when you rush a fighter's career. This is what happens when you mismanage a fighter's career. This is what happens when a fighter goes with a trainer that doesn't suit their style. All these reasons... Are the reason why Natasha Jonas has ended up getting knocked out like this today. Absolutely. And the question I have to ask is that if you sign with a promoter, do you have to go? I don't know, but do you have to go with the trainer that is with that promoter? For example, if you have Eddie Hearn, you go with um, Joe Gallagher or C Tony Sims. And if you're with um, Frank Warren, you go with Don Charles. Is that the way? Does it have to be that way? You know, um, because it didn't work for Natasha Jonas. It certainly didn't. Her 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 world has gone come crumbling down after this. And there'll be people online, don't you worry, Natasha Jonas is a hype job. Natasha Jonas is this, Natasha Jonas is that. I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you this much. When you're badly managed and you're badly you badly trained, because look. It's 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 Natasha Jonas, but her trainer, she's trusting her Jane trainer to move back in straight lines. When you move back in straight lines against a person that's winging, throwing big winging shots, and who made this match in the first place? 
I mean, you know, maybe let's say, well, you know what? You know, you're a GB fighter. You've had ample time, time to step up. They stepped up, and this is what happened. Natasha Jonas could have fought somebody else instead. But maybe they want, They thought Natasha Jonas was ready. She clearly wasn't ready. Well, even if she was ready, technically and ready, physically ready, technically she didn't look ready. Uh, physically, she didn't look ready. She looked like somebody who also was weight trained. She looked like somebody who had cut weight real fast. That's what she looked like, that she didn't make the weight properly. These are all the things I'm seeing, I'm looking at and going, something is not right behind the scenes, either with the trainer, either with making weight, her emotional state, a lot of things. But she just did not look right from round one. From round one, she didn't look right. That can be also because of the class of the opponent, of Vivian Obanoff and how good Obanoff is. But if you're basing it on what the Sky Pundits were saying from the first minute about how classy uh, uh, Natasha Jonas was and all this and that about how she was one of the best in the world and all this stuff. Well, I'm sorry, your record didn't suggest that. The people you fought didn't suggest that. The way you fought didn't suggest that. And the, re and the result didn't suggest that. And this is the guy, Joe Gallagher, that was rated Ring Magazine Trainer of the Year the same year that Peter Fury and Tyson Fury became World Heavyweight Champion, defeating Vladimir Klitschko. Who did um, Joe Gallagher and his team beat in that year at world elite level that could have matched that to beat uh, Peter Fury's performance? You tell me. So, I mean, this whole thing is an absolute disaster. Absolute disaster. And I'll put it out there. If you put Anthony, Anthony Yard in the wrong fights, if you put Anthony Joshua in the wrong fights, if you put any of your, your unbeaten fighters at the moment you're talking about, that you're hyping up, that you're on their hype train, and you mismanage them, you put them in the wrong trainer, you put them in the wrong fights, this is what could happen to your fighter. So don't think that your fighter is immune to this. Okay? Just because you've got millions of followers on Twitter doesn't mean you can fight. Doesn't mean because you've got a verified tick on your account, it means that you can actually, you're actually any good. It doesn't mean any other things. The squared circle, boxing, the boxing gods are unforgiving. If you haven't trained right, if you haven't been meticulous, if you haven't got the right trainer, if you're not being managed right, if you're not being taking the right fights at the right time, this is what happens. I don't know the backstory. I don't know what's happened. But from what I've seen here, it looks like poor management. Poor matchmaking, and uh, Natasha Jonas didn't even look, she didn't even look ready. She didn't look ready to be in fighting. She looked like she was forced in. That's what it looks like to me. She struggled at the weight. All these things, I don't know. And maybe her hunger's gone. Maybe she doesn't even want to box no more. Maybe she found that being a pundit outside of boxing and, and everything else and living off her amateur career, maybe that she's got paid as an amateur and she's well established and set for life. I don't know. I don't know. Now, Natasha Jones is outside uh, financial situation. It's none of my business, but all the things there point to a lady that was um, was in a place that she didn't want to be in. It was like somebody picked her out the audience and said, you know what? We've got a fight for a, for a title. Would you fancy having a fight? And Natasha like, said, no, not really. We'll pay you a lot of money. And Natasha said, no, I don't want you. I don't want to fight tonight. And they stuck her in the ring. Now, it could just be a bad night as well. It could just be a bad night, but... Uh, you know, technically, if it's a bad night, then she's got a lot to work on. So, those are my thoughts on the Hale Natasha Jonas situation. Can she come back? Yeah, of course she can rebound. Of course she can come back. But will she want to come back? She's got to leave her trainer, that's for sure. Absolutely. It was like somebody picked up the audience and said, you know what? We've got a fight for a, for a title. Would you fancy having a fight? And Natasha like, said, no, not really. Well, pay you a lot of money and Natasha said no I don't want you I don't want to fight tonight and they stuck her in the ring now, it could just be a bad night as well it could just be a bad night but yeah as I said it could just be a bad night thank you very much Ingram for that it could well be just a bad night but I don't know I don't know I I'm sure that I, I, I can't read my chat for some reason my chat's not popping up so apologies to anybody who's chatting here um i'm quite happy to talk about it later but yeah that's my thoughts on this particular fight boxing is unforgiving business and here's another example of a big prospect being 
Uh, oh, yeah. hi, Bayloric. Um, here we go. Show behind says her sister is Nikita Paris, sporting family. Aha, okay, that's nice to know, but this is not good. It's not good. So maybe you think I'm too harsh, maybe you think I'm, I'm being uh, critical here, but if you do, love to hear your thoughts on it. But these are my thoughts. Yes, Natasha Jonas can come back. Does she want to come back? Has she got the heart to come back? And if she comes back, I do not stick her in a rematch for this girl. She needs more learning fights. And all this rush to get into a world title fight. Natasha Jonas needs to refine her skills. And at 34 years old, can she refine her skills? She'll need a top trainer to do that. And I suggest... Um... um to retire before why did she come back ah so she did retire from boxing good question why did she come back that's a very good question uh marky b i didn't know she retired that's how much i that's how much no i care about natasha jonas you know you've got her on sky and you could add someone like uh jessica mcgaskill i keep talking about jessica mcgaskill who i picked to be a world champion in the near future all action all passion all business down to business and you look at this oh dear oh dear oh dear oh dear you sh if she was retired you've got to ask a question why she's come back was it financial difficulties normally that's the reason why people come back into boxing when they retire early i don't know i really don't know the bookies had her for the win like it was routine well it was routine for for open off to get the knockout win and think about this which is even more worrying just think this a second just think this just for one second um imagine that was chantelle cameron and hitting her on the chin or jessica mcgaskell hitting her on the chin they're getting brutal um yeah man when you're gonna do the dillian white thing my man we've been waiting waiting time for that interview and even suggested a vegan caribbean restaurant for you to visit in britain called eat of eden yes brother mad thing brother yes well um we're gonna get that dylan white interview for you definitely we got the anthony yard interview we did we delivered that we've got two absolutely we've got two cracking interviews for you to come up tonight today uh live interviews um we're just waiting for, for one to get called to, to be confirmed. Uh, this will be on the news channel and it will be uh, regarding Netflix. So that that's a big one, a major one. And then um, we've got one, hopefully, with James Ellaby Shear. Um, the 30-year-old who hopes to move into coaching told BBC, I don't think I've got the hunger and dedication to achieve anymore. There you go. So... I haven't even read that and I could tell she just didn't have the hunger. My mind is worrying to other things and there's younger people coming through that want a bit more. There you go. That, so there's my point there. I told you she looked like a person who didn't want to be there, wasn't interested. Why did she come out and have this fight? Was it a payday and a cash out? I don't know. But she just looked like she wasn't interested. And uh, if that's the case, happy retirement, Natasha Jonas. But uh, what a way to go out. Not a, what a way to go out. You know, the other guy, you know, this also reminds me of Anthony Ogogo. Why you should call him Anthony Onono. Listen, that was three years ago. Oh, my good Lord. So there you go. Jonas' opponent was 33 to 1 pre fight. That was three years ago, that article. They go, well, you're going to put that for last night. Excuse for last night's performance. Uh, Jonas' opponent was 33 to 1 pre fight. Okay, well. Should go and put some money on that one. Keep up the good work, peace. Thank you so much. If I had seen this fight beforehand, if I'd known about this fight beforehand, I'd have probably run down to the bookies. I'm not a bookie man, but I'll run, run to the bookies for this one. Yeah, it doesn't mean because you've been to the Olympics, it, or it doesn't mean because you're you're a GB fighter that necessarily you're going to become a world champion. I think there's a there's a um, there's a there's a there's a lot of deluded people in the world that believe. Because he's fought in the GB squad, he's going to be a world champion. You know, you've got to understand the promoter and you've got to understand whether promoters are interested in building champions and building legends or just having 
fighters that are running into world title fights. To me, you're either going to be a go to go to promoter that's going to build you into becoming a potential legend, or potentially, you know, having a world title fight and having numerous world title defenses, or you go to promoter that's quite quickly will rush you, fast track you into world title fights, and just want to, to, to you know, which has been shown over and over again. Uh, she retired in, in 2000. That was a BBC interview. Well, there you go. That's 2015. That's this is now 2018. As far as I'm concerned, the same thing could have applied for this situation tonight. She might as well just regurgitate what she said in that interview and said it here. Right, I'm out. Uh, Natasha Jonas, commiserations, stay retired. And as for Vivian Obanoff, um, I did reach out to Vivian Obanoff before her fight with Katie Taylor. Uh, she didn't reply to me, probably because she didn't speak English. But um, I definitely want to get an interview with uh, Vivian Obanoff. Obanoff. Uh, promoters don't care about the fights. It's true. Uh, Natasha Jonas retires. British Olympic boxer quit age 30 by Jessica Crichton. That was in 2015. Okay. Well, she's 34 now, isn't she? Coming up next, you'll have my... I'll be doing a video on Sergey Kovalev and that, that fight. We'll talk about that next on BWTM Sports. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave your comments, like, and share. Thanks for watching.